for our businesses, for our places of fellowship, for our brethren, for our parents and siblings, loved ones, far and near. All we can say is thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for the reason of our Lord.
far from him. It's not by qualification. But his mercy is always there. He's always waiting back for us to return to him with wide open arms. And this mercy sometimes doesn't even, it's not even waiting for you to even ask for it, even though we need to ask for it. Now show us in this Bible text as we go on to read from the book of Genesis chapter 4. We'll read up to this. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived, and Ben came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground, and, it, and in process of time it came to pass. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Before I proceed, there is always a warning before the fall. There's always a warning before the fall. And as we see there, Cain was angry about something that he felt, you know, was not okay. At that point, he was not in sin. But then he had continued. The Lord was warning him. And he thought, do us not well. Let's go to verse 6, verse 8, rather. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. I want to assume that when the Bible says Cain talked with his brother Abel, he probably lured him to the field. Hmm. Yes, sir. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. <laughs> um, I, my brother's keeper, I, I don't know what I don't know how far we have gone away from God. And let me begin as deep as maybe a ritualist who has killed a lot of people for us a lot of bloodshed, you know, for where we come from, kill people to make money, you know, harvest parts of the body. We will not hear that in this type, in this side of the uh, or in your own side of um, the world. But then there are several other things people do. And I know sometimes it takes to the extreme of somebody using weapon or anything to kill people. But this weapon, you know, I'm not called the tongue. Mm. You have used to kill yeah. people. You have used to say something at work that makes somebody to be sacked, mm. that end up in suicide. Mm. And I'm not here to condemn, not other people right now. I'm not here to condemn anybody, but to condemn the action, the act. Notwithstanding, I'm not also here to say that we are doomed. No, we are here 
to discuss the truth, not the facts. The truth that is the way I was. Cain didn't just kill Abel. But the almighty God who <laughs> question and say, Am I my brother's keeper? Why are you asking me about my brother? Well, of course, we know. We do something that's going to cover it up. We know we're good. In verse 10, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Why am I stressing this part? Like looking at the weight of what Cain did, killing his own blood brother, his own younger brother. No one says, ah, no, how can you do that to your brother? Oh, it's your brother, you're from the same mother, you're from the same father, you know? Hmm. Because of what? Is that the one that the door was accepted, the old was not accepted? Does that warrant you killing him? But where are we going to with this? Verse 11. And now art thou cost, now art thou cost from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Hmm. When thou sealest the ground, hmm. it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her uh, strength. A figurative and a, a fugitive and a bag of vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Excuse me. Somebody kill somebody. In our time, what is always the case? Lifetime jail, death by firing squad, by hanging, by execution, and all those sort of things. But this is somebody who was just, I, I don't want to say just cost, so to say, because <laughs> so people can be walking cops. They can be nothing come down their lives. But this is somebody who got cost and they were saying it was too much. But look at what happened again in the next verse. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. This is where you know it baffled me why why can we think that we said, and it shall come to pass. That everyone that findeth me shall slay me. I'm not trying to understand. You just kill your brother. Now you're afraid of somebody else killing you. If you think it was okay to kill your brother, why would you think, you know, you don't deserve to die also? But where are we going to this? For somebody who killed his brother, to still go to God and say, what you have, what you have declared upon me is too much for me. Huh? More like saying, that man just is with mercy. Hmm. And the same God would have said, ah, what do you mean deserve it? Somebody kills you, then what, what were you expecting? Guess what he said here. And the Lord God and the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, I don't understand. What that means Cain so special that God is not the cause of whoever will kill him. So whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And, and the Lord set a mark upon Cain lest any finding him should kill him. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
something else is hitting me at that end there. Thank you, Lord. It may sound like a digression. If somebody offends, if somebody does something wrong, and they plan this, if somebody has stood or messed up in anything, even if they're the one affected, directly or indirectly, you do not have the right. God has also to the judge to release judgment on that person. He is the only righteous being. He is the only one that can judge anybody and decide what is that person's punishment. So he is saying, yes, King killed Abel. I have made a curse on him. If anybody is now trying to say, you, oh yeah, this, you are just my cousin, you the brother, we should kill you also. He did send them. God didn't send them. They will be guilty of his blood if they kill him. It's sevenfold. It's sevenfold. Vengeance is my sin. I'm not talking about the church gathering, the church setting, somebody messes up and they is being suspended, anything like that. That's a different thing. I'm talking about human to human, you don't decide this is what they're going to do this sin. Because we're in a system where they don't play with justice. If somebody has done something wrong since he was 16 years old, 12 years old, he can suffer for that for the rest of his life. That is US for you. When I did a job, that I saw things like that. Put that way in, in my sentence was a school officer. So I know people are on that rule for life. People that have to register as sex offenders for life. People that have been tagged with that name. They cannot live anywhere they want to live. Because they get to start and find out that they are sex offenders. Right? They will send them away from that place. They cannot have an apartment in their own or a house in their own or live in one community. They'll be checking is there a school or daycare around where they live. They are suffering from something they did maybe when they were teenagers for the rest of their lives. But our God is not like that. Our God is a merciful God. Now, we saw that we're not discussing, we're not encouraging or giving a license for us to just do anyhow and believe no, God is merciful, He's going to have mercy. That's what we're saying. We are saying at this point that we are, how far have you gone? Because the typical human, and I speak of my experience as a person too, once you're wrong, you feel like, ah, you know, I'm feeling wrong, let me just go. <laughs> you do more. Instead of retracing our steps back to him. But the farther we go in the wrong the Father will drift away from him when his arms are wide open, calling us to come to him. Amen. Who would hear of the story of King David in the Bible? I will not say, ha ah, ah, how will you do that? Even the message that came to him was a message of, you did this thing, this grievous offense. You are so wicked. You just made the old journey by yourself. You, you, you slept with somebody's wife and killed the husband and took the wife. You just, you just asked you, if somebody did this other thing, you, you just did the job by yourself. And he went to God and wept and he asked for mercy. And he got mercy. Hallelujah. And I did say, Back again from our origin, somebody is your enemy or is a friend or is a friend of me at work, at school, uh, in the family, and they do some things oppressing you, you know, lying down, you know, backbiting, you know, several things they did against you. 
openly or in, or in secret. And I must say, those are very painful and hurting. You still do not, I'm, I'm learning this, don't have the right to condemn any of them. Because Nebuchadnezzar, God went to use him. Oh, I'm even going too far. Apostle Paul was killing the children of God. He was persecuting. But God was, when Christians were seeing a wicked man, God was seeing a tool in his hand. That's the message God will serve. Hallelujah. He was persecuting God's people. And if you see there, if you study his life, you see that the persecution that he persecuted the children of God, he now faces his own. <laughs> he faces his own. Eh? What do I call? Shipwreck. The beating. Imprisonment. Getting down from the fence. Ah. From the wall. And, and in his own case, he knew that he, he, he is not going to be, you know. So he was ready to suffer and die for the sake of Christ. For to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. It was now a gain to him to die. Because he knows what he has done. All the work he has read to the kingdom of God. For it now be saved. He did the value of the salvation. Hallelujah. We are talking about the mercy of God. He caught the death of somebody who was the one responsible for the death of your child, or of your husband, or of your mother, or of your father. You have no right to hate that person and condemn the person. Because, guess what? You can be arguing with the person all your life. Two of you pass on, God forbid, the person that was the victim ended up in hell. The person that was not the victim, that was the, the, cop, the, the person that committed the offense, the culprit, ends up in heaven. Why? Because they obtained mercy. Our God. Is unquestionable. Is unfathomable. Is unsearchable. Oh, this person, he was a witch, he was a terrorist, he was a dictator before he died and everything, and he died, and we know for sure, for sure, he will be in hell. Says who? Do you know you obtained mercy before he passed on? Just this is two weeks ago now. We're just reminding ourselves how careless I was last July last year and I lost my mom. <laughs> but then all the comforts that there's this one that she obtained mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And in dying with it. Dying with mercy. Yes. Be lucky or fortunate, or uh, no, that you get that mercy and dying in it. But this is a good time to have to that mercy and return our steps. You cannot be worse than, or even if you are worse than Paul Apostle, who was persecuting children of God, even if that's your case. Even your case is that you killed. You contain bloodshed, you did blood money, all sorts of things. God is still merciful. He can still restore. Even if you know for sure, for sure, for sure, that person is the is the terror in your family. Even you know for sure, for sure, that person is this or that. Yes, we are required to live with wisdom of those people. And I'm not saying I'm wise enough even to live with such people. It has to be by God's instruction and help. Today he will say, do this. Tomorrow that's it. He will say to you, he will say, do otherwise. He's the greatest strategist. Amen. Amen. And the strategy, we don't have to question, don't have to, you know, you know, 
Oh, but ah, this same situation has to do like this last time. But now you have to do like this. This people said to say something against me last time. You said speak. You don't say this. Then I'm saying just be quiet. This was the same response. So I said to respond. The same situation. So you cannot deal with God based on past experience. Past experience, hallelujah. You cannot take steps based on past instruction of the same, on the same situation. That will always seek him. He created us that way to lead him. Back to our topic as we run off. Our God is a merciful God. Amen. As much as it's best not to take it for granted, how far have you gone from him? How deep, how grievous are the offenses you committed against him, the sins that you committed against him, against the body of Christ? against yourself, mm. that you are disappointed in yourself, family disappointed in you. Friends are disappointed in you. You have been deserted. You have been called all sorts of names. You have been let alone. You have been labeled, attacked, a thief, a no good, no good person, you know, smoking, the rest of like that you cannot do. You become, nothing good can come out of, of you. The only one is the only says cousin, cousin, a friend that is closer, that sticks closer than a brother. Hallelujah. Bible says, Bible says, Bible says, um, no other love can surpass this other man should lay his life for his friends. Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the kind of love and mercy he has for us. Brethren, how far have you gone away from him? It's never too late to return to him. The Bible says, for his mercy endures forever. Great is his mercy towards us. I want to encourage us tonight. Don't go further. Don't go deeper. Don't go farther away from him. Draw near to him. His mercy goes beyond just what we see as abstract. His mercy is a personified mercy. Mercy is a being. Mercy is a person. That's nothing entirely right now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to trust God that as we think on this topic beyond what has been said on this altar and we draw near to him and we obtain mercy from him tonight and the grace to stay on track with him Amen. for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We give you praise for tonight, Almighty God, for reminding us tonight that your mercy, they are new every morning. They are ever new every morning. And your arms, they are wide open. I will return to you, no matter how far we have gone, no matter what we have done. And also reminding us that we cannot condemn anybody, that you are not condemned. Hmm. We give you praise. Be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray. Help us, O oh God, to do your will. Amen. So do us of your word, not just hear us. Yes, Lord. Help us to return to you. Amen. As one of us, as one of us have, have, have made up our mind to return to you, I actually do. Please cleanse us. Amen. Please wash us. Please purify us. I send us back into your fold. No matter how deep we have gone or far we have gone away from you, please, according to your word, you said, as many as come to you, you shall in no wise cast away. Yes, sir. Daddy, we pray, according to your word, that you will not cast us away. Amen. As as you come to one of the song, cast us not away from your presence. Have mercy upon us and just close to yourself. Because, Lord, we want to reign with eternity. 
We pray, Heavenly Father, that it's just your path and help us to abide in you for the rest of our lives. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless and be your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
what we need to do and round it off. Yeah. Yeah. Trusting God that as we gather next Friday, as we gather on Sunday, 20th of December, His presence will be mighty here. And you will do great, great wonders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We know the Cosmo Foundation is handling some projects and also the outreaches. And uh, I know the Lord is leading us to do even more. The, the Lord is touching your hearts to support this mandate, this <coughs> calling, just to reach out to the elderly people with medical outreach, um, items, food, clothing. It could be money also is acceptable as the Lord will helping us to apportion them and locate them accordingly and correctly. As in helping us to do this, if you want to partner with us, reach out to us. Our email is the Comforter Ministries 21 <coughs> at gmail.com. The Comforter Ministries number two, number one at gmail.com. Reach out to us through that. And for those of us who have not have been watching or have not watched before just joining us, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram. It is the Comforter Foundation. It's simply the Comforter Foundation. We have a website, info at comforter.org. Info at comforter.org. Please join us and follow, like, share, comment on the videos. It's not for popularity. It's not for fame. It's for the word of God to reach out to the ends of the earth. And the Lord God Almighty himself will be a rewarder in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. We give glory to your name for tonight. We pray in every heart, let your word be associated in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray also, Father, as we come gathering next Friday, you will, if you tarry, you will keep us alive and healthy in the name of Jesus Christ. Our lives shall be a bank of testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will come to fight your glory each time, O oh Father, rejoicing and celebrating you. No more souls in our lives. Amen. Your mercy will speak for us and draw us closer to you. Amen. And we will be with you in eternity after all achieved for your kingdom here on earth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, shall we share the grace? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, we want to thank God for the water projects that, you know, I mentioned that we have had some, God is helping us, Comfort Project had some projects. We want to thank God for thus far, He has helped us. He's still doing more for the testimony of our parting death. Yes. And because of the projects, yes. we appreciate exactly. God. Exactly. He's doing wonders. He's still Amen. Now, we just shared here also. God is doing wonders. And uh, the devil is going in shame because maybe in shame over us. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.